Typically in ALO, um, in, in the past, subtypes have been defined by one chromosomal alteration that one would find in every patient in that group that can readily be de detected with a conventional approach such as cytogenetic carrier typing or a simple fish assay. We now know that those approaches have failed to detect some of these newer subtypes because often the alterations are complex, they're not possible to see on conventional carrier typing, or they're actually heterogeneous, there are multiple different rearrangements that may be the founding lesion within a group of ALL. So that's the first message is that the diagnostics is now more complex and the most uh, attractive approach now to identify these cases is, is often sequencing based approaches, such as RNA sequencing or even whole genome sequencing. With the subtypes themselves, there are several of interest that have attracted a great deal of interest. Um, the first is pH-like ALL. This is a subtype that was first described in 2009 in, in children and adolescents. And we and others have now studied many hundreds, indeed thousands of cases, including adults right into older adulthood, and have shown that this is very common. It comprises up to 25% across the age range of ALL patients, BALL patients. It's uniformly associated with high risk features and poor outcome, commonly dismal outcome. And the genetics are perhaps the most diverse of any subtype of leukemia. We've now found over 50 different rearrangements, structural changes and point mutations that activate a variety of cytokine receptor and kinase signaling pathways. Clinically, it's of great interest because these uh, rearrangements we now know from experimental work are bona fide driver lesions of leukemia. They do promote cell proliferation and they cause leukemia in vivo. And they're also attractive to inhibition with uh, tyrosine kinase inhibitors. Uh, these include most commonly ABLE class inhibitors such as imatinib and dasatinib, uh, JAK inhibitors such as ruxolitinib, momolotinib, selumetinib and others, um, uh, and a range of other agents that target, for example, RAS signaling, NTRAC signaling and less common alterations in this group. There is good evidence now from individual patients that some who have refractory disease can have a very impressive response just to the addition of a TKI uh, to their therapeutic regimen. And so now several groups in the US and around the world are proceeding with prospective studies to evaluate the efficacy of these agents as frontline therapy in combination with chemotherapy. There are several other subtypes that several groups, including our own, have described. Um, these discoveries have largely come from genome sequencing and RNA sequencing. Uh, these are each typified by a number of rearrangements with one core gene. So the first of these is MEF2D rearranged ALL. This is a form of leukemia where the myocyte enhancer factor 2D, um, a transcription factor gene, is fused to a variety of different partners, most commonly BCL9, a Wnt pathway mediator. It deregulates a number of pathways, uh, including a uh, histone deacetylase called HTAC9, and uh, we've shown that these cells are potentially treatable with histone deacetylase inhibitors. So this is another interesting, although somewhat different story, where a new subtype of leukemia, again genetically quite diverse, but with its own potential vulnerability. Another one is uh, ZNF384 rearranged leukemia, and this is interesting for additional reasons. This, this is also representing a subtype of cases of BALL that are diagnosed as conventional BALL, but it's also highly enriched in B myeloid mixed phenotype acute leukemia that have a somewhat different immunophenotype. And so it's considered that this fusion or, and this gene, which is rearranged to a number of different partners again, uh, drives a very immature and lineage ambiguous progenitor to proliferate and expand. And it can then be diagnosed as a classic BALL or a, uh, acute leukemia with mixed features. And there are again potential therapeutic vulnerabilities for this sort of leukemia as well. Perhaps one of the most interesting forms of leukemia that several groups converged on in the last uh, year was uh, actually a good risk form of leukemia where patients typically do very well. And these are cases that have a founding rearrangement of a homeobox gene called DUX4. But the situation becomes a little more complex because We've known for many years that this group of cases that has a very distinct gene expression profile also often has deletion of a second transcription factor gene called ERG or ERG. And we now know that there's a, a sequential mechanism of deregulation where this founding rearrangement 
deregulates DUX4 and it then in turn deregulates ERG, often leading to its deletion. And we consider that these two events are together oncogenic. So clinically, this is important, not because we need more aggressive therapy in these cases, but they actually may need less aggressive therapy and it's important to diagnose them appropriately at diagnosis for initial risk stratification. Both of these alterations are cryptic and not detected by cytogenetic analysis. And so it's a, another nice example where we feel that the field is rapidly moving towards these next generation sequencing approaches.